This is Mike Sempervivi from WrestlingObserver.com. Check me out on Wrestling Observer Live every day. And also check out your boys, Rich and James, on One Nation Radio. Woo! He now rocking with One Nation Radio. Welcome to the program. Woo! James Boy, Richard Ladder, and a couple friends. Yeah. With the show for your wrestling needs. Shopping out the rest of the IWC. We gon' tell her how it is. We gon' shoot from the hip. Wow. If they putting out trash, we gon' rip from the bits. Make sure that you tweet us and you rate the shows. Tell a friend to tell a friend I'll let's get it on the road. Hey. One Nation Sports. One Nation Sports. One Nation Sports. Welcome to One Nation Radio. And now, here are your hosts, Rich Latta and James Boyd. And thank you for listening. SocialSuitsFlex.com. BWB, what's up? Hello, girls. This is Wale. And this is One Nation Radio. You already know. Welcome to the October 22nd edition of One Nation Live. James, what's going on, man? Not too much. It's cooling down after uh, my my Florida State Jimbo Fisher rant, the second one in the last, what, two, three weeks? Yeah, man. Uh, we got a, a lot to uh, talk about today. Uh, it's been a couple weeks since we've done a wrestling show. We did an NBA preview. Um, the NBA season is in full swing, and it looks like it's very exciting. Uh, lots of great numbers being put up everywhere, like in the league. Um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm pretty excited. Uh, what up, Casey? Uh, what up, Simon? Uh, what up, Rob, who's listening? Uh, what up, Finishell? Caleb, Caleb, if you're still listening, feel free to call in. I believe James would like to talk to you. Um, call in, call in and defend yourself, you coward. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, man, this is, uh, you know, One Nation Live. Uh, as you guys know, there is another WWE pay-per-view tonight. Um, another. Another one, as DJ Cal would say. Um, we thought we had one show, but we have a completely different one. Uh, if you give me a second, I'll pull up the card. James, what what are, what are you thinking overall about this TLC card? Um, the first thing that struck out to me after hearing, you know, the huge shakeup was like, wow, these guys in like, you know, what seemed or whatever else. I don't know if it was told about, you know, the time frame when they decided to, you know, pull the trigger and make the switches. Like, in the base, like in short order, they pretty much booked a better card um, than the one they originally had going up for the pay-per-view um it's not to say that um kurt angle with two guys that were in a, in a, in a tag team champ and the tag team champions are um a bigger draw than the shield but the fact that we had pretty much a card that was as far as drawing power a two-match pay-per-view and the rest of the card is pretty um you know on paper pretty you know weak um but now we have you know the potential for like a match that's oh, about uh, the same interest because, you know, it's been a long time since Angle's been in the ring. It's been, what, like 11 years, right? Yeah. Well, in WWE. Yeah, like 11. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. In WWE, I mean, hell, he fought Rey Mysterio like a year or two ago, right? On a, on a IPPV that had Roy Jones on it. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> I saw him wrestle at the but, beginning of this year against Del Rio. That's right. That's right. So, um, you throw that out there to, you know, the um, WWE Hall of Famer is, is back. You know, the guy that was just literally the uh, the headliner for the um, Hall of Fame just last year is back in the ring. Um, and he's one of the most gifted uh, in-ring performers, you know, the, uh, the company's ever had. There's intrigue there. There's obvious intrigue. And then you throw in, like, the element of that is Braun Strowman. Um, you throw in, you know, talented workers like everybody in the ring. And you throw in, like, the fact that I can just imagine already, like, the way that uh, – that Miz is going to be like a cheap chicken shit in this match. It's going to be great. Uh, but you also, on the other end, you sort of get away from what pretty much was looking like a dumpster fire with uh, Finn Balor and Bray Wyatt as Sister Abigail versus the Demon, and the Demon's a pumpkin. Uh, so, <laughs> and you throw in, you know, Finn Balor versus AJ Styles in an exhibition match, and, you know, they can tear the house down. So now you have two strong, very strong selling points. As opposed to when you're just coming out with one, uh, I think they. I think this is a great. 
comment from upgrade. comment from Simon. He's saying this shit is going to be better than Survivor Series, um, and based off what they're initially they're doing, it could be. Uh, and he also says the Olympic gold medalist is back in the ring. Why don't they stop playing and clear Daniel Bryan? We are going to get to that uh, after our preview because I just came up on a story that I will would love to share with you guys about what may be going on and then how this plays into uh what will eventually happen about 10 or 11 months from now um they know what they're doing um so let's look at the card let's start with our main event we got dean ambrose kurt angle and seth rollins uh, against cesaro kane the miz sheamus and braun Strowman. yes people kane is back um and it's all my fault. I, I'm here to take the blame. Um, <laughs> as, as I sat two weeks ago on this show saying, man, uh, you know, we were celebrating 20 years of Kane. We were saying, you know, this guy has, has been underrated and he's a legend. And hopefully he comes back for like one more kind of, you know, like kind of a last run, essentially. Like, you know, a goodbye, a farewell. WWE a farewell, a farewell a feud or, or, or uh, angle, if you will. Yeah. yeah, but they've decided to further make this the alliance to end Hulkamania, and they decide to throw Kane in the main event. <laughs> <laughs> WWE habitual line stepping out here uh, with Kane. You know, Kane's in the main event this year in 2017. How did this happen, James? How did this happen? Well, I remember maybe. Maybe like a year or two ago, you had made this point that like once a year, or maybe this was like 2014 after the the Kane Daniel Bryan thing, or immediately after WrestleMania 30, uh-huh. you had mentioned that like Kane and the Big Show because of you know because they're Kane and Big Show, once a year they will be inserted into the main event for whatever reason <laughs> um, at any point. I it, remember and, that. And like and then from there, I, I started laughing. I was like, that can't be true. And then I mean, lo and behold, you go to like the very next year. And Kane and Big Show are such a prominent force. Actually, no. You go to Survivor Series that year, and they are such a, a heavy force with Big Show in the uh, with, the, with that turn in the middle of the Survivor Series main event in 2014, and that and one and that you know that classic uh, Survivor Series match. And then you go to Royal Rumble 2015, yep. and Kane and Big Show are just out there literally whooping the hell out of Roman until uh, Rock makes a save. And then you get to after uh, WrestleMania uh, 31, and then like the first feud is, is Roman versus is Roman versus uh, Big Show, and they're out here like fighting in London doing all the other stuff, and like and then later that year, King King got a title shot. King versus Seth. Yep. King versus Seth. Exactly. It opened op- as he has. Uh, I affectionately called it the two Kanes uh, storyline. Yes. Where there, there's there's corporate Kane and there's Demon Kane, and if you hurt. If you break uh, Corporate Kane's ankle, all of a sudden Demon Kane will come out the back of the ambulance and and he'll just stomp on it hard and and, and basically knock it back into place and then keep wrestling. Uh, and and it's 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 seemed to be you know a, uh, and it's almost on time every single time it, it keeps coming up like yeah, it's man. really interesting like I never I never even thought about it now now that you keep mentioning it, like I cannot see it ever now and then <laughs> if I remember correctly. The 2000, was it 2015? Yeah, the 2015 uh, Survivor Series is based around the, the Brothers of Destruction yeah. versus the Wyatts in the main event. Yeah. Like it keeps go- it keeps on going. Yeah, um, yeah, I. Um... I'll, I'll take the take the blame for for all this Kane stuff. Uh, but you know, looking at what we do have now, we have Kurt Angle, uh, his first WWE match in eleven years, uh, under ridiculous circumstances. Um, you know, the neck, the injury problems, the drug issues, and they finally clear Kurt Angle. Happy to see him back. But it's a TLC match, James. Now. Yeah. <clears throat> I guess we can count on Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose doing a bunch of the work, but if you know Kurt Angle or watch Kurt Angle for any amount of the time, do you think Kurt Angle is going to come out here and just mail it in? I don't. No. <laughs> like, some, like somebody's going to take a super dangerous bump, and like the only person, like, and the only person just based off this, the you know the amount of like force and impact because of the weight. The only person I hope that it's not going to be 
uh, taking like some crazy stupid bump is Braun because Braun might tear everything if, if he if he takes one of these things. <laughs> and I, you know, and given what we've seen with Sheamus and ladder matches, I'm not too kind. I'm not too fond of, of Sheamus doing something stupid either. Yeah, because he'll end up being on the shelf for another like for six to nine months again. So so yes, let's let's look at let's look at a couple things here. So you put Kurt if if you were saying James. What can be the ideal situation for Kurt Angle? And then we look at what this one is. So you put Kurt Angle in, in one, a TLC match. You put him in there with a handicapped TLC match, for one. You got Sheamus in the ring, who's known to concuss motherfuckers. You got Braun Strowman yeah. in there, who's not too far removed from being one of the most dangerous dudes on the roster. You mean dangerous as far as like kayfabe or dangerous as far as like he almost killed Oz with a million times and he almost paralyzed uh, AJ Styles at Survivor Series last year? Yes, yes. So um, okay, yeah. We <laughs> I don't know if these are uh, ideal situations for for Angle or anything, but um, it'll be oh. interesting to see how they do it. Uh, what are they What are they going to be wearing, James? Do you, do you think you know the, uh, Ambrose and Rollins are just going to go back to their regular gear since Roman Reigns isn't going to be here? And, and what do you yeah, think? They refer, they, yeah, they, I feel like they refer to their previous gimmicks, right? And and, and what do you make of, of Roman being missing from this, James? I think uh, I mean I think it's unfortunate and it sucks for him because like this is oh man like you know like this is now the third time in four years where he's missed time during crucial moments in his career. Like he's fresh, you know, he's you know he's relatively fresh as a single. He's building his push towards uh the 2015 rumble and he ends up catching having a hernia injury and you know missing all that time that would have been crucial to help his development and get better on the mic and you know maybe you know all that time he had he would have got better as opposed to having to declare for the rumble uh then then you get to um last year over the summer where he has a PED charge and he had he stripped him of the belt as champion um, and then they put him on where he lost, like he got pinned in three straight matches or whatever. Uh, you know, that was a drop off. Like this dude was supposed to be the champion, the, the anointed champion and, the, and his title reign doesn't even last not even 80 days. I think it was like 70 days. Yeah. Um, he, he, you know, he just barely got over two months out the box. So now we're here where, you know, they, 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 you got to a crucial point where WWE, um, you know, and I, I don't feel like this is completely one thing or the other. I feel like this is um, multiple things. Oh, yeah. Things. Also, like, Casey brought up <laughs> another part. Um, I don't know if he had a broken nose, Casey. Remember before WrestleMania 32, he had that deviated septum, and he had to basically yeah, take so time the off. Blood, the, the blood capsule. Right. The blood, the, yeah, I remember the blood capsule. And they had to... Um, that was, that, he only missed like two weeks or something like that, right? What was that? Yeah, I think he missed like two weeks or in... or a, It was two or three weeks. Yeah. Yeah, like I don't, I don't really consider that like missing time. Like you know, like right now, Nia Jax gonna be gone for like two weeks, right? Like I don't yeah. consider that really missing time. Like people get, you know, like after TLC to, uh, last year when AJ was in that walking boot and wasn't wrestling like that. I mean, I don't really, and he was on TV like that's you know more of the same thing. Like oh, you're just off for like a couple weeks, right? Um, I, like like if you're gone for like four weeks, I consider that as quote unquote missing time. Or if you miss pay per view, I consider that a missing time. Um. But uh, and then you get to where we are here, and where you know they get the shield back together, and I feel like, like I said, like they were doing. It wasn't just like, you know, a lot of people think, oh, they're just getting the shield back together to help, you know, get get Roman um, to help him finally get to the point where he's actually as over as his push. Uh, and I mean, at that point, I don't, I don't necessarily think that's the case, but I mean, it doesn't hurt, right? Uh, but at the same time, it's like those guys. The company, they are at a point where you know they're trying to get subscription um, ratings up because they're coming up to the quarter a quarter review, and also you know they're trying to actually uh, do something that they really haven't done in previous years that we've been watching since 2011, which is like actually give us something like really really uh, really really good and something that you actually want to buy, like during football season. Mm-hmm. Like they, they, I mean they they try, but they, sometimes it seems like they don't try hard enough. Uh, this time, like, you know, you can say what you want to about WWE and where they are uh, creatively or whatever, or even this year, but, like, you can't say they, they, they're they not really, really trying um, to, like, uh, what do you say, optimize uh, every ounce and uh, everything they have right now for this time, this crucial time of the year. 
like which is right before WrestleMania season. So um, I feel like that was I felt like you know like that that would have been a good thing for Roman to be out there with those guys because you know the crowd loves the fact that they're back. Um, now every time he it's his turn to talk on the mic, they boo the hell out of him. But you know. At least, at least he's getting. He's a, he's in the you know they're cheering at him at least this time. They're cheering part of him. <laughs> he's in the vis- to... he's in the vicinity of of, of the cheers. <laughs> you know, and like, you know, I really thought like you know they this match would have done you know been been a bit of goodwill for him. I mean, I don't know. I guess you could say, given all the great matches he's had, I guess you know nothing will be goodwill. But whatever. Like I I enjoy Roman in the ring. Uh, I feel like his push has really hurt him and they, they've done a lot of uh missteps and it's really hurt him um maybe because people are mad at the company but like ultimately like i i hope for the best for him and this would have this would have helped yeah he um you know this match is gonna be absolute car wreck i, I have no idea who's gonna win um at this point you know i don't see uh, Ambrose, Angle, and Rollins beating five guys, but you never know. Uh, it, <laughs> I, I would I would have picked the Shield to win had Roman been wrestling, just because you don't um, beat the Shield in their first match back, um, <laughs> as correct. I've I've Absolutely. heard some folks suggest, but I, I don't agree. Um, but. Uh-huh. Um, the injury, or excuse me, the sickness, viral meningitis, has led to another great match uh, being added to the card, and <laughs> this match is this is the perfect style of, of matches that they've, or this is the style of matches it felt like WWE has avoided doing all year long. Yeah. What they're they're finally going to let happen is two great wrestlers wrestle each other. And it's been yeah. so rare. And, 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 and they, hold on. And also the caveat to that is, like, they don't have, like, screwy finishes be the story that carries uh that holds the feud together right like like aj styles and kevin owens which was you know for anyone's money a big disappointment you know if you just look at the matches out of kevin owens mouth he said it was a disappointment so you know balor and styles these guys you know they they walk similar paths they've you know they're finally here the the two uh leaders of the bullet club the first two leaders of the bullet club uh like single solo stars and I am just ready for this great exhibition of wrestling that we're going to see. Hopefully, this doesn't, you know, end with Jinder Mahal running in um, from <laughs> from SmackDown to screw AJ Styles or anything like that. But I really feel like you need to do a one-night storyline of Balor and Styles running into Anderson and, and Gallows separately at different points. Like, and, you know, too sweet them and be like, what's up, good brothers? And, you know, all the bullshit that, you know, they be doing. But then... It leads to something like, like you know, like they they've got to they've got to integrate these guys in somehow. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think there should be at least you know just for the fact of like this is basically just hot off the presses. They're just going to have a match and run it for those that don't you know that need a storyline to to get uh, to really buy in like like Dave uh, or like um, like Chad. Like they need to do that throughout the show to to get to it. Um, and, I, and that'd be a perfect way because he always leaves the intrigue of, all right, like, you know, are they going to screw somebody? Like, are they actually going to tease the Bullet Club thing? Like, who and then, like, where, who are Gallows and Anderson with as far as that? Um, yeah, yeah. And, you know, there's the potential of um, a, a new faction starting up or, you know, a faction that we've wanted for a long for a few years now to uh, or a couple years now to uh, to start up. Like, that would, that would leave you some, in some intrigue of, you know, possible, like. Uh, storylines in the future right and um you know you, you and i'm just anticipating the match as being blow away awesome this is a match of the year candidate on paper um hopefully <laughs> yeah you know it is it, really telling who, who they send in to save the day you know aj <laughs> really telling yeah. um yeah. so what else we got on the card um oh but i uh, hold on so like I just hope that, like, eventually, one of these What's times, up, whenever SmackDown's in a pinch, they'll actually use raw talent to bring them over to SmackDown to, to help uh, prop up a, a SmackDown pay per view. Because every time there's been a situation where they've, uh, since this brand split, where they've had a situation where they need to fill the gaps, they have gone and they have went and uh, raw super showed it. 
So yeah. hopefully, eventually, we'll get one of these SmackDown Super Shows, if you Pay will, back. because we had we had a WWE champion at right after WrestleMania go over to Raw and fight in a, in a match, and they also brought the number one contender over uh, to interfere in that match. Uh, you had you had John Cena declare himself a free agent. You had uh, you had the Undertaker, who was clearly uh, at the last Survivor Series, telling AJ Styles and the rest of that SmackDown men's uh, men's single group uh, that y'all need to uphold the standard for SmackDown Live. And then next thing you know, he's feuding with the Raw guy at WrestleMania season. Yeah, yeah, you know SmackDown don't never get no love. Um, nope, they, they ain't SmackDown got- Live don't never get. Smackdown Live don't ever get a birthday. Yes, yes. <laughs> they ain't got no love for, for Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre. Um, <laughs> so, uh, uh, moving on, uh, we have the debut of Asuka uh, coming against Emma, and I could not be more excited. If you want to talk yeah. about the literal, the most dominant superstar in wrestling history, it might be Asuka. For, so, <laughs> for, so, for, for as long as she's been in NXT, she's completely undefeated. She's unde- literally, Asuka is on this LeVar ball, undefeated, never lost. And not, and she's not only undefeated, she's undefeated with, with match quality, she's undefeated with star potential, she's un- undefeated with overness, she's undefeated in every sense of the word. Like, what do you... What do you make yeah. of this? And and WWE is being gifted a, a super duper star. James, how will they handle this? Hopefully, well. Like, I, I I really hope that they protect her, and I really hope that they let her uh, like showcase how much of an ass here she is. As long as like as long as they they make her to where she's like literally dangerous, or they treat her like she's some type of level of like Brock Lesnar ish for the women's division, and she comes out here. And uh, and and she's imp- physically impressive. Um, the rest of the stuff, like it'll take care of itself. I think this will get over. I think it's real easy to 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 see her come out with that with that gigantic uh, that with that I don't even know what to call that thing with uh, with that garment with the long train with all the <laughs> color and the spec and the spectacle that is Oscar and that interest music. Like I think all it takes is just you know. Like in the way they've done the vignettes have been so well. Like, I, like those are some of like my favorite vignettes of like the last few years, um, uh-huh. from somebody like coming back. Like, I really enjoy these. And so like, and they presented, and everybody in the female roster has been talking about her backstage, and making her like be a big, ain't gonna be a big deal. Like she is almost like the new measuring stick. So we're off to a good start so far. So like, if if she comes out and she kicks Emma's ass in like an impressive fashion, like all it takes is just you know. A steady, a steady build of the next, you know, four months, and we have something for WrestleMania. Yeah. Um, hopefully, they don't do something crazy and and say, "Yeah, we're gonna have Emma go over like on night one, or or have Emma take like eighty percent of the match, yeah, like how they did with uh Nakamura. with uh Dolph Ziggler and Nakamura or Dolph Ziggler with uh Bobby Roode, right." Uh, Asuka doesn't need to be selling. That has never been her value. Why? Because people just don't believe it. And, yeah, like, um, it could lead, you know, and apparently, you know, Paige is cleared to come back. So, <clears throat> it'd be interesting to see what they do after. Maybe they, they go into a situation where Paige jumps out on her. Uh, and that's just me speculating, by the way, so don't take that and run with it. Um, but, you know, I'm excited to see what what Oscar can do. Uh, she's kind. This is kind of a semi headlining position, you know. But um, Alexa, it, 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 I feel like it would have been until like they dropped the AJ uh, big face Joker on on the card, right? Um, so we have the other we have other women's match for the Raw Women's Championship. Alexa Bliss defending against Mickey James. Um, they, Mickey James has been subject to the old storyline and it's been, yeah. it's been relatively harmless how they've done it. Uh, and it, and it's a lot of like just comedy, like, so I don't think it's been mean spirited or anything, but you know, uh-huh. it, um, you look at it and you want Mickey to win, don't you? I mean, I do. I think that, you know, biscuit butts aside, like, <laughs> Her delivery of her promos, like she is clearly, um, you know, people say that Alexa is the best uh, woman's promo um, in WWE. I won't dispute that, like because she's clearly, like if it ain't her, like she, if it ain't her, then like she's she's next, right? 
Um, I feel like in a matter of what three weeks or so, they managed to get um, Mickey over as a as a actual legitimate challenger of the month, and that's really saying something considering she was dead as a doorknob just six weeks ago. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and like she is in. It's something. It's something about her to where like she she is so good at taking words that if like Sasha or Bailey or Charlotte, if they had been given those same words, it would have came off. We'd been like, oh my god, this was a misery to get through. Like, it, but the fact that she, but the fact that like I don't know what it is about her. Like her delivery is so good. And it's the same thing with like some of the people like like. Sammy or Kevin, where they can take pretty much any piece of crap that's given to them, or anything that, that sounds a bit corny, or even Jericho, for example, and like they can make it work for them. And she showed that like some of this stuff, like biscuit, but she she's managed to marry like that. We know that's corny, but the crowd still chanted for it. So I I think you know I think like this is a this is something that Alexa needs is because um, they were able to really get over promos, and that is Alexa's strong suit as a uh, performer. And, you know, they've been around each other for a while now, especially when they were doing the SmackDown Live gimmick with uh, with El Luchadora. But I feel like, you know, because they've had some, they've been in the ring against each other a little bit, like, we should get a pretty quality match for uh, for the, or uh, uh, we should get a, a, um, a nice professional say? wrestling get, match. Yeah, we should get a professional wrestling match uh, out of those two, <laughs> given uh, what we've seen, what we've seen from Mickey and what we've seen um, from oh, uh, Alexa's athletic ability. Oh man, um, I remember the days where we would get the the women's matches that would just blow away and steal the show, and I just miss those days. And as long as Alexa Bliss is holding that belt, we're never going back. Um, <laughs> the uh, I don't I don't think she loses here, and I personally wouldn't uh, strap the rocket to Mickey right away unless she wanted to continue the feud. Uh, if this is just a one off, just keep Alexa with the belt. Um, but you know, if they want to switch, do if they want to shock people, which they you know could be in a position to do, there's nothing wrong with Mickey James winning the championship. Like they've done it six but, but, times. But Rich. But Rich, they only do shocking when it's when it's ne- skews negative. They don't do shocking when it's skews positive. They don't do shocking <laughs> correct and baby. They don't do shocking. They don't do shocking for baby faces going over. They always do shocking off for 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 heat. It's yeah. always for heat. So are you like, ready? Are you ready I for the finish? Done, done. I was gonna say, are you ready for the finish to this match? Like in, to involve like a bottom turnbuckle and then uh, Alexa Bliss hitting a oh, DDT oh. and people having no idea that's the finish. Uh, I mean that could happen. I mean they love to do that for uh, to finish uh, off these women's matches where like the bottom turnbuckle that's padded is like the most dangerous thing in the world. Yeah, um, you know new level. Um, <laughs> so uh, aside from that, uh, we've got some other matches. We have Kalisto and Enzo Amore, and I think this is a bit, would be a good time to talk about Neville. Um, <laughs> Neville walked out of WWE, uh, so reportedly, you know unhappy with his position and you know he had uh pretty much gone over and dominated the uh cruiserweight scene since last you know january and been arguably like one of the best performers in wwe overall uh when you know he was a he was a legitimate uh wrestler of the year um candidate like and he probably would have got like he would have finished in the top three yeah maybe even two and you know I, I like to think that, you know, like, I don't obviously work backstage or anything, but if you look at what was, you know, laid out to be the future for him, um, there was a report that he was supposed to lose to Enzo Amore, essentially the uh, day Kalisto won that title. So, if you're Neville, you see what was done with people before you, after you lose that championship, right? And... He ended up, you know, losing, or excuse me, he ended up leaving, you know, they say, because he's like, oh, I don't want to do that shit. So, if, you, if you're if you Neville, right, you have to, uh-huh. uh, I, I assume, and, and you know, this is not based off of anything, but when they put him in the Cruiserweight division, it was presented as an opportunity. And he was like, alright, y'all wasn't doing nothing with me anyway, so I'm going to go over here 
show y'all that I am someone that you can invest in. I am someone that, you know, can carry a brand. I am someone that can bring legitimacy and I am someone that is a fucking star. So, Mm -hmm. and with the goal in his mind of, all right, when I'm done with this, I'm going to be able to move back, you know, to the regular schedule of programming. I'm going to be able to wrestle on SmackDown. I'm going to be able to be a regular raw superstar. The only thing I can think of is they were like, yo, we we have, we we know what we said or you know what we alluded to you know had promised you or whatever but we just don't see that we need you in the cruiserweight division uh we need you to put over Enzo Amore and you know just pretty much you're still on 205 live and Noah was like you know what fuck that like <laughs> like I'm not I'm not going to have my value lowered by y'all I'm going to leave at my hottest you know, I'm still, you know, this, like, you guys are not going to cool me off until the next time y'all want to use me. So, just like a company would have rights to do, uh, you know, with their independent contractors, th- that's exactly what it is. He's not an employee. So, he can be like, you know what, that doesn't work for me either. So, I'm out of here. <laughs> James, what do you, what do you think yeah. of this whole uh, deal? Okay. Well, it's funny that you miss it because every time I think about, like, the, the uh, independent ca- contractor... Uh, or the WWE's line of they're not uh, employees or independent contractors. I think of it like being like the same type of fraud, like fraudulent, like sham that is like um, they're student athletes. They're not. They're not uh, employees. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the same thing. It's like okay, cool. Like I, I see what you're doing. Like you, you don't. You don't like both. In both cases. Like oh yeah, you don't want to pay for health insurance. Like both of them, both cases. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I, I think. Uh, I I didn't really go that deep as you did as far as like trying to figure out his real uh, or try to like look even like you know even ponder about what his motivations were to leave. I just thought saw it as um, just like he came in saw that he was going to uh, lose to Enzo said I'm not doing no job and then left which is you know there's a long history in this business of guys basically saying I'm not I'm not you know putting somebody over. I'm taking my I'm taking my ball. I'm going home, or or hearing or hearing whatever that you know they didn't or hearing something they didn't want to hear as far as like what they uh, the Booker wanted to do, and they said, "All right, that's what you want to do. I don't want to do it, so I'll holler at you." So I, I forget <laughs> it's just that. Um, so I, I mean, you can you, I just took it as he, he's leaving, and I wonder how much longer uh, or how long it'll be before he, he's you know released. If they'll figure, um, come to some type of uh, reconciliation or whatever. Uh, but I mean, you know, that dude's one of the best wrestlers in the world, and I, you know, I hope to see him wrestling again soon. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and the thing is, like, if he comes back, he's eventually going to have to do that job. Like, is you know, the the way it is, like, it'll be a mutiny if if Noah just comes back and you know he he gets you know quote unquote what he wants right without you know. Because, you know, I I imagine the wrestlers would be like, well, why can't I, you know, uh, you know, just walk out when I don't want to do a job or whatever? I mean, hey, hey, here's a dirty. Hey, here's a dirty little secret. Yeah, they all can if they wanted to. They just all they just don't want to, you know, they're just afraid (laughs) of like, oh, my God, what can you know, if I'm not getting a WWE check, that means I actually have to go out here and actually like, you know, wrestle hard matches or I have to actually go out here and and, um, actually like you know, build on my own without, uh, without any help, you know, like there's, there's a, there's a great deal of comfort in being at the number one, uh, wrestling company in the world. No, no doubts. They have, it has its privileges. And one of them is like, you can make a lot, you can, this is, you know, this is a spot where you can make as much, you can most maximize, uh, your value as far as making money, um, while taking bumps. Uh, and you know, and it's trades off. It's trade offs are the fact of you know all the corporate stuff, and you know you're not you're not in control of as many things as you would like. So that's a trade off. I, I also kind of think life. this is this and is. You, like, as I also think this is going to be like the the sign of things to come because WWE, as much as they're expanding, uh, you know, and all their their stuff, their reaches, like they have so many guys, and there's only so many spots. And with the independent scene, you Correct. know, pretty much rising, like from where it was before, it's like all these guys are going to eventually like need places to wrestle. Like there's too many, there's too many out, outside options in WWE for the amount of spots that they're giving out. Guys are just gonna fall into them. 
and I think Neville's like one of the first big dominoes that will you know um, go. You know, we we if you look at it, like someone like Ryback for example or Jack Swagger, like yeah, they're not built for that uh, for that indie life essentially because it's like the style of wrestlers they are and what they want to command. They're they grossly underestimated the market. Um, you know, for their services, essentially. So they have to f- kind of figure something out. But, or they could just go open a subway or something. But, <laughs> um. <laughs> the, 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 the cool thing is, like, if you if you go that route, you have to have an understanding that, A, you can't go out here and ask some gigantic, like, some gigantic uh, price unless you were, like, hot at the time you left. Like, and I mean, really hot. I don't mean, like, I don't mean Ryback hot. I mean, like, you know, Daniel Bryan, uh, if you decide to go to the Indies type of hot, or, or some, or so like, or two levels below that, like you have to be some some type of. Maybe you weren't a main eventer, but you had, but you at one point, you know, you were, you know, uh, a main event player. You have to be that kind of person, and you also have to, you know, like really want to wrestle, and actually be on a grind. Like you can be like, and, and the picture roll moment is like when we talked about this because we, you know, fantasy booked uh, these guys for you know for their, their careers when we first came back. But like, you can either, you know, seek the comfort uh, of being um, Dolph Ziggler and have that have that kind of talent on the mic and uh, be the kind of wrestler that has this kind of talent um, in the ring form uh, and and seek comfort in the fact that like. I'm okay with 50-50 booking. I'm okay with being down and then up. I don't, you know, I, I'm okay with being still or as an act or whatever. I'm okay with whatever else or being um, put on the back burner because I'm with the number one company. Or you could say, you know, I see myself as better and I, you know, I feel I feel that I have a talent uh, for this for this business and I'm going to go on the road and be and end up being Cody Rhodes. And I don't mean like everybody that goes on the uh, that's going to go this route that decides to defect from WWE. Or not even say defect, or just size of lead from WWE. Not all of them are going to be successful stars um, right. on the independent scene. But if you know, if you feel, if you, but I, I'm I'm never going to knock somebody for betting on themselves, right? Even if I think it makes me foolish, like you know, like I thought what Kyrie Irving did, like I thought ultimately um, for his long term uh, profile in the NBA, I thought it was foolish for him to leave, but like. If he thinks he can do, if he thinks he's better off on a better team, on a, on a on a on a on a new team by himself, and like, and decides that he's okay with like scrapping the super X, that's on him. Yeah, uh, like you know, you better get good for you. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, back to the Kalisto Enzo Amore match uh, that we kind of <laughs> you know discarded. Um, I'm kind of expecting Enzo <laughs> to go ahead and. Uh... But the the thing is like that's a. The Neville thing is a bigger deal. Neville was like literally the biggest face of that uh, um, division for, for for six months or more than that, and or like eight months, nine months, and now he's gone. Yeah, uh, and, and the belt ended up on Kalisto, essentially, who is a real contender for the worst promo in the history of the wrestling business. Um, this guy is an abomination. He's abysmal. Um, <laughs> like the uh, and then you match him with Enzo. That's like that's not fair. Like, <laughs> um, I'm I'm anticipating Enzo uh, walking away with the championship and you know opening opening the uh, reign back up, you know, to get rid of that clause where no one could fight him. Um, it's just it's it's a it's, it's just an unfortunate situation. It's going to be the first cruiserweight championship uh, match on pay per view this year without Neville, and I'm not expecting a lot, you know, and. We'll see how it works out, but um, sad Neville's gone. Hope, hopefully, uh, like you said, well, I, it, he he ends up in a, in a place where he can, whether it's New Japan or whether it's Ring of Honor or or just hitting the muck essentially and <laughs> and us streaming this shit. Uh, Neville finds what he's looking for. Um, and also in cruiserweight action on the main card, Cedric Alexander and Rich Swan will be taking on Jack Gallagher and the Brian Kendrick. They've had a nice little uh, storyline going on. Uh, Jack Gallagher is now wrestling in the full like kind of you know suit. Like he's not wrestling in the trunks anymore. He looks like a real he's brawler wrestling. out here. Like he's wrestling in slacks, a shirt, a vest, 
and take fists. That's how he's wrestling. Like, there's nothing more heel than like getting and sweating in a suit. <laughs> like, that's, just, that's, just, that's just that's just gross. What what is wrong with you? So like, uh, like I'm gonna buy Hot Davis. Who made you like that? Yes. Uh, Cedric Alexander, Rich Swan. Uh, these guys are going to get a chance to team up, and they're both super high flyers, super athletes. Uh, we were uh, at Rich Swan's last, you know, independent show, and he he could have been more more gracious to the guy he wrestled, and you know, the whole situation with all the fans and all that. And, and the guy felt like a real star. And teaming him up with Cedric Alexander, this could be a good thing for both of these guys. Um, you know, <clears throat> if only they could, you know, challenge outside the division too. You know, as a tag team, that that would be pretty cool to see. Um, what what do you make of this match? Uh, I make of it is it's a spot filler because they have like taken all of their mid card acts and thrown them and shoved them into the uh, the top of the card uh, for the main event. Like that's what I think of it. Like this match, if not for the fact that you had the IC champion and the tag team champions in the main event. And Braun Strowman, and Kurt Angle, like, and, you know, and the number one contenders for the tag, or you know, the second best tag team in the uh, the company, or that brand, like those guys would not even sniff uh, this this main card. That's what I think. True. Uh, hopefully, you know, hopefully, you know, they do. Hopefully, they have a really good match because you know they tend to always have good matches. Um, but hopefully, you know, they can do something to where the crowd doesn't like turn on them or just give them cricket. Right. Hopefully, you know, they work they they bust, they they work really hard and they're able to get over. Potential show steal. Really hope for. P- p- potential show steal, I think like with uh with Swan and, and Alexander and then you know, Brian Kendrick can like pretty much hang in there with anyone and um yeah, I, th- I think these guys will uh, will actually make a really good showing of themselves. But that looks like it's the full card. I mean, there's a Sasha Banks and Alicia Fox match on the pre-show. Um, Alicia Fox, you know, finally got some merch made, so shouts out to her. I might have to just support her for the culture. I got a question. You stupid. I got a question. Uh, why is, like, Raw so allergic to, like, actually, like, getting their actual, like, their women character feuds over? Like... You have Alexa and Nia staring at you in the face. You just basically smiles out of it. You, you weasel your way out of it after finally like getting to it. Um, you finally have uh, Bailey back, and they both screwed each other out of their out of a, winning the title at the last pay per view. And they're how they're still just far away from uh, from actually like starting their feud. Like they have to like are, one of these feuds are not going to be on. Uh, WrestleMania, correct? Correct. Or this is it going to be a situation so, where they put you... everybody in one match? Yeah. So okay, my, my point is like, at the best case scenario, only one of those feuds is actually going to make it to WrestleMania. So, and like, what at what Oscar? point are you actually going to, you know, get to it? Yeah, and what about Oscar? Like, so it's like she has another monkey wrench into it. So. No, that, my, my point is, like, hell, they might not have actually even get any of, the matches on, uh, any of those feuds uh, that they've been, like, protecting and protecting and protecting on a WrestleMania card. So maybe burn one of those already. It's supposed to, like, waiting so long that people just be like, oh, so now y'all doing this after y'all waited all this time? Like, you're not – I don't think you're going to build up, like, a hill versus hill feud where, where, you know, after you already did a hill turn and then they forgive each other, like, and now she's protecting the same hill again, like – like you've already done like stupid stuff to to ruin to like take the luster off of it. Like so, you know, like get to it soon, please. <clears throat> yeah, man. Um, so I came across this column uh, about Daniel Bryan um, this morning, and apparently, uh, according to eWrestlingNews dot com, it's an exclusive. Uh, Daniel Bryan and others were considered to be Roman Reigns' replacement at WWE TLC. Um, so, like, it was Daniel Bryan and at least one Attitude Era superstar. Who that may be, we don't know. But, you know, the, as the story goes on here, WWE officials are worried about the amount of bumps both Kurt Angle and or Daniel Bryan would be able to take. Over the last day or so, several names are being tossed around, and Daniel Bryan's name was one of those. The idea is that Kurt Angle and Daniel Bryan, if it had been him, wouldn't have to work as much as Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins, and they more than likely carry the workload. The idea is for Angle to be the last member of Team Shield to be tagged in. 
why he would be tagged in a TLC match, I have no idea. But he'll more than like they they also said he'll more than likely do some in ring work and a few light bumps, and then he'll be there in place with Roman Reigns for the three on one uh, power bomb route, you know, slam if they go that route. As of yesterday, the finish of the match still hadn't been decided upon. And, of course, Daniel Bryan was on Twitter reacting to this, and he was like, hmm, interesting, like with the thinking face that Kurt Angle had been allowed to uh, compete. So, if Daniel Bryan's being tossed around as a potential replacement, there's obviously nothing wrong with him physically. Right? Maybe. Maybe. You don't know. Like, my, my whole thought of it is, if you're considering having that dude come out and bump, period, he's going to have to take a bump. Like, unless you're going to do the Bret Hart, like, 2010 thing where he just takes no, any bumps. Like, you're going to have to, um, you know, quote-unquote clear him, right? In some form or whatever. So they haven't even, they've never done anything physical with him. Nope. since uh Since, like, after WrestleMania... <laughs> 2014. So, like, you have to quote unquote clear him, which means that, like, if you have to go through all of that, doesn't that mean, like, he can wrestle? Yeah. And also, could there be anything worse for Roman Reigns than to be replaced by Daniel Bryan? I mean, is there a worse scenario? Meningitis? I mean, meningitis, like, <laughs> meningitis ain't fun. Like, <laughs> Correct. But I'm saying, like, you know, like, it, it, out of anyone else, like, you know, if Kurt Angle replaces you, it doesn't necessarily relate to Roman Reigns, right? But if Daniel Bryan replaces you, yeah, yeah. and then Daniel Bryan, they see everyone go ape shit crazy for this guy, and it's just like, WWE will just have to sit there and be like, damn, we fucked up. Well, I mean... Things have changed. Like, Daniel Bryan's brain is better than it was, you know, a year ago, two years ago, whatever. So, like, let's not just act like, you know, there wasn't, like, you know, healing done in this situation. Like, they just, you know, pretty much I – know, I know the assumption is or the, or the feeling amongst a lot of people is that they pretty much shut him down so that they can make room for, for Daniel – for Roman Reigns, which is like, I mean, I guess there may be something to that in a, you know – on a uh, subconscious sense, but ultimately, like, it's just a man, it's a man, you know, cares about money over everything else, so I really have a hard time imagining, uh, like, you know, Vince, who I've, you know, I've said all types of, you know, ridiculous things about how cheap or how much of a money-grubbing uh, bloodsucker he is, would, like, just say, you know what, there ain't even no room for you, Daniel Bryan, we just gonna, we just gonna, we gonna Kaepernick you and, and keep you away. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I I don't I don't think uh, he he's above. I don't think Vince is above trying to move someone out the way like that. Um, James, there is another match rumored for Survivor Series um, that I am just like shocked and just in disbelief uh, over. Brock Lesnar versus Jinder Mahal uh, looks like it's set to take place at Survivor Series. Now, I don't know the rules of the match. I don't know if there will be a stipulation. All I know is that Brock Lesnar should beat Jinder inside of 180 seconds. Or else... Yeah, yeah I mean, well, well, first things first, right? Yeah. Let's talk about rules. Like, what is, it to believe, what is there to make you believe that Brock Lesnar follows rules? <laughs> <laughs> who are you? Who are you? Or who is anyone? Who is anyone to be telling Brock Lesnar uh, about any any uh su- any such discipline that he has to follow? Bro, this is a match of two of the most despised champions at the same time. This is literally the culmination <laughs> of the name of our Instagram thread. Our champions suck. You got a dude that. Really- this is the culmination of that. Like, bro, this is like, who wants to see this? Like, really, <laughs> okay, do you? Re- well, no, well, no, like, not many people. But do you really feel that people despise Brock Lesnar? Are they just like? I think uh, they're God, tired of Brock Lesnar. 
or do you think he's stale or he's or he's lazy? He's, like, there's a, I, like, I there's think not... they think he's stale, and they're just tired of the Lesnar effect hanging over everything. I mean, it does suck when the like you know, the the top prize and the th- that's supposed to be like the main driver of everybody like actually you know, being the hell out of each other is like off TV for for you know weeks and months at a time because he only shows up for the big shows, brother. Like, yep. yeah, so, like, yeah, in that sense, yeah, it is a bad thing. And also, like, they've done it before. Like, it was like, they've done the same. Like, they've done, like, they were like, yeah, we're going to try this one thing. And it sucked. And they were like, yeah, that, remember that thing sucked. Yeah, let's, uh, yeah, it did suck, right? Yeah. Let's do it again. Like, <laughs> that's, a, that's, like, the real, like, drag about the Brock Lesnar title reign thing is, like, like, dude, you've done this before. And also, it's like, so what are these, what are these clowns, what are these geeks on TV fighting over? Like, what are they doing? Yeah, what's going on? And with Jinder Mahal and Brock Lesnar, you you start thinking about the, what the finish can be, and if they decide to, you know, is this a situation where they're trying to make Jinder Mahal look competitive? Is this a situation where they actually want to lose their fucking minds and put Jinder Mahal over Brock Lesnar? Um, with the you know outside assistance of of course the Singh brothers and potentially a new Brock Lesnar opponent, but to me. You know, if you have this guy go through Braun Strowman with one F5, with through Samoa Joe with one F5, <laughs> and you have Jinder Mahal come out here and 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 basically kick out of those and do whatever, bro, there is going to be lots of booze and just apathy and seeing this right. Would Brock Lesnar versus almost anyone else on SmackDown would have been more appealing, right? <laughs> like um, if, if Shinsuke Nakamura wins the title last month, right? And then we're talking about Lesnar versus Nakamura at Survivor Series. You don't you think people are a lot more yeah. down with that? Yeah, absolutely. But well, I mean, whatever. Like they have their plans, and this is part of the plan. Apparently, like I wouldn't have done this. I think this is a bad idea because, like. Either you're going to do a double count on the main event, which is like, why would you ever do such a fucking thing? Because there's no build to it. Like, you're not going to, like, want a champion versus championship match at a later date between those guys. So, it's a one-off. So, why would, why the fuck would you ever do that? Uh, like, I feel like, one, both of these guys, is like, because Brock Lesnar's so strong, it makes no sense to ever beat him unless you're, you know, you're planning it for something big um, as a big part of a, as a big thing to do. And also, like, Gender is so is still struggling so much that it's like, why in the hell would you beat him? You know what I'm saying? Like, this is a lose lose scenario. Like, whoever loses should not lose because like either a he's too strong to where like it makes no sense to do this as a waste, and b like oh uh, you're gonna beat Gender after he, and he's already a weak champion. You're only gonna make him look worse. We had a couple comments. So come like in. they caught them, they, they booked them, them book, they booked themselves into a corner here. So good luck to him. Yeah, they uh, had a couple comments from Casey Norton. A part-timer comes in, makes all the money, booked to the moon, and his word is not work is not pretty good. Uh, or, his, excuse me, his work is not as good. Pretty tired. That's why people are leaving. They can't get to the top. Then Dellen also says, uh, nope, we know they won't let uh, Gender win because they want Roman to be the first to beat Lesnar. That's cool, but they had him lose to 50-year-old Goldberg last year. Like, I, I don't understand yeah. what this mythical Brock Lesnar uh, victory is supposed to do at this point. That And that was a big uh, reason for my column a little bit earlier. It's like, too little, too late for Lesnar and Reigns. Like, they don't even really need to fight each other because that mythical heat has already evaporated like <laughs> it's like and uh he also says Brock Lesnar versus the ugly Singh brother would have been a far better choice I, I don't know which one ugly Singh yeah uh, I think he's talking about the older looking one one with the beard yes okay um I you know I do want to see him you know toss those guys around that will be uh fun to watch uh, if there was one... So basically, re- like, treat my game insecurity again. Yes. Yes. Um, now... That's what WWE will be presenting, right? As a main event or, you know, advertised big match. The day before that, NXT is literally doing war games. <laughs> like, how, how, are the, how are these companies, like, you know... 
headed towards the same goal. Like, I don't, I don't know, man. <laughs> um, so, there's been, like, something happening in WWE right now where they, you know, guys are in an international tour dropping, getting sick, or personal issues. Uh, the SmackDown tour lost Kevin Owens and AJ Styles. I think Kevin Owens had a family situation he had to tend to, and he left. And then also um, AJ Styles had, like, a stomach bug, and he had to get out of there. And then he has to go wrestle on a pay-per-view tonight. So, what did WWE do? They decided to put Triple H in the match. So, Triple H wrestling on the SmackDown show. I wonder who his opponent is going to be. I don't know. Is Triple what H is still... That, what is that? Uh, is, that is that for tonight? I'm not sure. Uh, it, it's, it may have been... Um... I will find out. Or is that going to be? Or is that going to be a Monday show? Like, I mean, I, I imagine has to be like tonight, and then they, you know, they, you know, they travel there. tomorrow to get to wherever they are, you know, in the country for Tuesday. Right. Like he's going to compete at the live event tour in Chile today. That's what it's going to be. Yeah, that's what I figured. I wonder who he's going to fight. You know, is Triple H now? a heel or is he a face since he's he's you know been gone from there i think it's probably a house show thing where like oh yeah like it's triple h he'll get cheered whatever yeah i, then, I think, like, you know, I think he's like, gonna be a baby he's a face down there like they're gonna have him go in there with like you know they could do triple h versus Sami Zayn or something like that they could do um who else they could do triple h versus Nope, they can't do that. I think Zayn's the only guy, really. Just give him a good match, and you know Zayn's still a heel now. Because what other heels can they do? They're not going to let him fight Jinder Mahal. Um, you could do maybe Rusev. I don't know. You could do Rusev. You could, you could do Rusev. Um, like I saw, some, I saw something where like I'm guessing like on a on house show they're doing um, Rusev and the Usos team up together. I need so to see that Rusev, on TV. So they had, so they had that that so they had that day one Moshka out there and I thought that was funny. Bro, they they um <laughs> oh okay, Casey said I saw Corbin tweet at Triple H, but there's no way Hunter will put over Corbin. I mean, I don't think Hunter's <laughs> losing. Like <laughs> whoever he's coming out there and wrestling, he's about to win. He's going over, brother. I know how this company works. Um Yeah, you, you, you could Triple do Barry Corbin. Here, I heard, you think Triple H out here doing spot duty at house shows and lose? Nah, man. Like, like, what do, what would it take for somebody to walk up to Triple H and be like, you know, I think, um, I think you 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 should like, you know, do the favors tonight, and then we come back, you know, on, a, on another situation, <laughs> and then you get to win back after, you know, like, like, do you, what what kind of balls do you think it takes to to suggest to Triple H that Triple H do the job? I think. You know what? I think Triple H probably like gets like actually like appreciates people that uh, that have the, the the gall and the stones to, to tell him he needs a job. But I think he thinks he's he like he's like, huh? I see, I see he got some. I see he has some guts, to, some guts. But at the same time, he's like, he ain't doing yeah. that shit. But he's at the same. But at the same time, he's like laughing. He's like, silly rabbit, tricks for kids. Silly rabbit, you finna take this L. About to take this pedigree and look up at the lights, like. <laughs> um. And last thing I want to talk about today, um, Okada. So it has been reported that he has just passed 489 days. Um, I believe he passed Shinya Hashimoto for the longest IWGP heavyweight championship reign ever. Uh, I believe this is Okada's fourth reign with the championship. Um, he's been nothing short, or nothing short of a revelation in an absolute testament to professional wrestling and he's just shy of his 30th birthday and if you look at his resume this is a absolute living legend that hasn't even turned 30 years old yet uh what are your thoughts on uh, uh what okada's uh done well i mean he's you know you know this like he's my favorite new japan wrestler um that that i've ever seen uh in you know, the Couple the few years that we've been, you know, even like doing anything involving watching any bit of uh, New Japan, uh, like he, he's just so, so, so smooth, and it's just so easy. And 
the, the amount of crazy matches that he's like great blow your doors off blow away matches that he's uh, that he's been in and you know the time even like just between the G one and the G ones every year in 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 like um, Russell Kingdom like the dude is the dude's great. Like he just is. Like I don't really. I mean, he's so tough. It's almost like at this point, it's like, like, what is there to talk about? Like, are you, like, how do you, like, are there? Is there anything you, you can say about like Michael Jordan's greatness? I'm not saying he's Michael Jordan, but like, is there anything you can say about like the greatness of like, you know, some of the all time like Mount Olympus, Mount Rushmore, uh, like talents mm-hmm. in like in any type of uh, you know, performance setting? They, you know, like, there's enough has already been said. Like, I don't really know what to say here. Like, the dude's the dude's great. Like, the dude continues to be great. He continues to uh to shine. He continues to perform. And like, I can't wait for Russell Kingdom against Naito. Like, it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, um, those guys are gonna. <clears throat> I'm I'm actually expecting the title change to come there, but I've never seen a championship change hands at um uh at Russell Kingdom since I've been watching. So uh, I'd be excited to see if that you know is where they're going with it but um this guy has been you know along i think kenny omega inspired him to get to another level um you know those guys are kind of made for each other but okada i just want to say something about you know the kinds of matches that he's had he's had every kind of match that you could foreseeable see or you can possibly do as a main event style match in the modern era if you want just a crazy unbelievable blow away match he's done that if you wanted to see him do a body part match which i can't even like i can't stand those um he's done it with minoru suzuki and then if you want to see a war he's done that with shibata like if you want to see a wwe main event style match he's done that with uh cody if you want to see a broadway hour draw He's done that with with uh, Omega. He's he's done a trilogy with Omega, like in the G one where it was like, all right, it's finally time to give this dude you know this back and just get my ass whooped. Like he did it. He's also whooped Omega's ass and looked absolutely brutal. Like this is one of the greatest wrestlers we're ever going to you know that's ever going to be written uh, written down about in the history of the business. And I'm seriously. Uh, considering opening up our voting this year um, for Ric Flair Wrestler of the Year and In-Ring Performer of the Year and a lot of our other categories because of Okada supported by Omega and what these guys have done this year and what WWE hasn't done this year. So, you know, I don't, I haven't, I don't know how you feel about that yet, James, but that's like, this guy's been so good. It's like we can't just leave them in their own, you know, separate Outworld, essentially. Uh, how I feel about it is, I, I don't, I don't feel too comfortable about that. But at the same time, it's like I feel like we can still say uh, that, you know, um, Braun Strowman or or whoever else is, you know, WWE is a a one Nation Radio Wrestler of the Year, and then fully acknowledge it. Like, yeah, need, yeah, that like he absolutely is because we categorize this as being a WWE main roster award. Like, this is not, like, this excludes, like, Johnny Gargano. This excludes um, Ishii this, uh, and Naito and and all those other guys in New Japan. Like, I, I, and, and, and uh, you know, uh, uh, Prince Puma or whatever else. Like, I feel like we can we can clearly be okay with acknowledging that, like, you know, we can hand this Braun Strowman and say at the same time, like, yeah, like, this is the best wrestler on the main roster in WWE. This is not the best wrestler in the world or whatever else. Yeah, we might have to, like, you know, refigure our categories. We might have to create the Okada category, like, <laughs> or, Okada category. or something like that. But, yeah, um, that that pretty much uh, covers it uh, for, you know, what we got going on uh, tonight. Um, looking forward to AJ Styles and Finn Balor. Thank you guys for uh, checking out the show. Uh, James, you got anything you want to add before we get up out of here today? Yeah, I think that uh, Jimbo Fisher fired half of his coaching staff. <laughs> That's all I got. Um, <sighs> nope, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do it. I, I was gonna gonna let him know about the thing I emailed you. Um, yeah. Oh no! Don't do that. <laughs> no, don't do it. Reconsider. Be so furniture on the subject. You're sure? <laughs> like no, do not do that. Yeah, do not man. Do that. So. Uh, 
Yeah, there's a uh, there's a big theory um, I have pretty much about you know the state of WWE, but one day I'll, I'll unleash it on you guys. But today just ain't a day. Um, but that's gonna wrap it up. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Uh, make sure you guys check out the SMC podcast on one on the Su- Social Suplex um, podcast network, One Nation Radio, One Nation Live, also socialsuplex.com. Just celebrated three years in business. Jeremy, what's going on? Shouts out to you. Um, this is uh this is the squad, and we will continue riding because it is BWB full life. And we out this yeah, bitch. All they have to say is uh all they have to say is Caleb is a coward. <laughs> Later. <laughs>